Uh, Olivier, um, this, what an incredible place to be. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, I found this incredibly inspiring um, as the venue. And I, I think what I found really interesting about this symposium is the sort of interdisciplinary conversation. And you were talking, I mean, you're a policymaker, um, quasi regulator, yeah. and you deal with Europe's financial markets. And I think most, many people watching this might wonder why you're interested in climate um, and environmental issues. Um, don't usually associate financial markets with addressing things like climate change. Well, I've always been interested in science in general, and um, I try to be a sort of a conscious citizen. So, and climate change is something big. is It's happening. It's documented by science. It's pretty much recognized by everybody now, and it's going to have a big impact on our lives. So, some years ago, um, when we tried to figure out, okay, well, what do we need to mitigate climate change in Europe? And particularly after the after the COP21 in Paris, uh, we made the determination that we need 180 to 200 billion investment per wow. year. And there's no way we can do this with public budget. So we started to think, okay, well, how do we reorientate finance to, to do that? Because we, we have in Europe lots of savings. People save a lot, so we have excess savings. Yeah. But these savings tend to have a huge appetite for liquidity. So we don't invest long terms. Well, the needs of the people that save are long term, because we save because we're aging. So we save for our retirement. Um, but long term is not good enough. It needs to be long term and sustainable. So we can make these two imperatives so people saving for their retirements and the need to finance long term uses in a sustainable way matching. And this is what we're trying to do. So really you're talking about ordinary people's money, ordinary people's pensions and savings and how I guess you encourage people to put those into investments that literally, maybe it's too grand a throw, but save the planet, deal with one of the biggest issues we face. Yeah, well, this is this is what it is. I mean, actually, virtually all of the uh, investable money is coming ultimately from savers. Uh, everything is in the firms. If you go through the food chain, you end up with somebody that's saving uh, for a reason. Um, so we're not necessarily talking about private investors investing in sustainable projects. We're also talking about that. Uh, but we're talking about throughout the financial services, uh, how do we incentivize companies to be better in terms of financing our long-term needs and our long-term sustainable needs. You're part of the European Commission, DG FISMA, has been working on a, a plan for green finance, a sort of green action plan, if you yep. like. What, what's, what are the sort of key aspects of that? I mean, how, are you, how, how is that going to drive what people call you know, green investment or climate investment? Okay. Well, what we, we're, we're doing in the Commission, we're doing policy always the same way. So we always start with trying to consult everybody and put all those that have the knowledge and the expertise around the table. So in that case, we created in 2016 so the high-level group on, uh, of the, on climate finance, and we asked uh, Mr. Timon. Mr. Timon is the vice chairman of, uh, of the Task Force on Disclosure okay. to chair this. Right. And uh, we have aggregated people from NGOs, asset managers, fund managers, and we asked them to come with a comprehensive report on, okay, if you had all the levers and you could decide what is it you would do in order to redirect finance towards sustainable uses. Yeah. So they came, um, a year and a half after that, they came with their report in uh, February 2018, which we followed two months after by an action plan that borrows very largely on the reports. Uh -huh. So this is basically number one is mainstreaming. So we want to mainstream uh, sustainable finance into all of the financial regulations. Uh, number two is transparency and disclosure. Okay. Um, so, but transparency and disclosure is not enough. Transparency and disclosure is important, it's necessary. People need to understand what and why. But if you just let it happen through organic growth, that will not make it to, to match our needs in time. So we need to have a bit more than this. Um, so the plan is about 10 different work streams. So 
actions in the truck stream. And we started to we decided to start very very quickly. So the first measures were taken in May already this year. And the very first one is what we call the taxonomy. And the taxonomy is nothing more than a common language about what's sustainable, what is not. So how, you, how you define, I mean, something. Because I was going to ask you, if, if someone's watching this and watching you know, our conversation, they might be wondering, well, what is green investment? How's that different to, say, any other investment or any other sort of pension plan? So what we've been doing is we've been defining six goals. And a green investment and an investment that matches all the six criteria but it's not you don't need to match all the six criteria you may match two you may match three um, and then you can adapt your uh, your um, investment policy to to this let me take an example um, people that produce flat glass uh, you know for windows and yeah. so most of them are not that green uh, but they produce a product that is extremely important if we want to reach our goals because we will need to do energy uh, efficient renovation of the buildings quite a lot. This is actually the, the first source of, uh, of savings in terms of energy. So, so the glass may be quite energy and resource intensive to create, yes. but it saves a lot, but during its exactly. lifetime, it saves a lot of so energy. So the first thing okay. you need to do, you need to make a, a balance between these yeah. two things. And also you need to reward those flat glass producing companies that try to be greener. Because you can be less energy intensive or you can source your energy differently, etc. etc. Um, so what the taxonomy is trying to do, it's trying to break down all this in small pieces so that you can re-aggregate them in order to build a, an investment strategy. So you can decide that you will invest in, I don't know, a bomb that has been issued by Sagodin for the purpose of having a specific quality flat glass that is enable say, passive, passive houses. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. And that doesn't mean Sagodin is green. Well, it makes a lot of sense because at the moment there's just, I mean, a plethora. There's, there's it feels like there's hundreds of standards and metrics yes. and methodologies out there. And how do you know which, which one you choose? Well, that's the second thing. So the taxonomy is the floor. So you need to have this common language so yeah. that we, we understand each other when we talk. Then you need also to re-aggregate. So you first disaggregate, yeah. as I just explained. And then you re-aggregate in order to give a simple information to the investor. And for this, the second action we have foreseen is an action on benchmarks. So two types of benchmarks, what we call a low carbon benchmark, which yeah. is a decarbonized version of the standard benchmarks yeah. you have all the time and that guide investors' investments. Yeah. And what we call positive impact uh, benchmark, and that is a benchmark of uh, uh, values that are aligned on the Paris Agreement targets yeah. of less than two degree. Yeah. Um, so if you want to have a really super responsible investment policy, well, you will buy only positive impact carbon benchmark registered values, for example. Yeah. Um, and the third thing we're doing, uh, we are trying to align uh, the uh, practices of the business in terms of disclosure on the basis of the recommendations of the uh, task force. Uh, and uh, most of it will be uh, standardized, but still voluntary, at least in the first stage, except for those um, uh, financial intermediaries that market themselves as, as green. So if you market yourself in the press as, okay, I'm a sustainable fund, yeah. you will, then you will have an obligation to prove it on the basis of the methodology that we will have uh, defined. So the issue is really disaggregation transparency and standardization right. so that indeed you cannot say oh I'm very green by whatever standard nobody else knows yeah. uh, and that is probably tailored made to your uh, to your publicity needs uh, you will have a European standard and you can benchmark yourself with that standard. everyone knows where they are you know, everything's defined exactly. and everything's measured you know by a common standard I mean it makes sense so I mean just just to finish because I mean this is ground could be ground changing in Europe, but we've heard from people from around the world, China and the US. Um, what 
do you think this would have an impact globally as a sort of set a standard? And I guess my other sort of question, what, what was the biggest thing that stuck in your mind from the discussions we had yesterday and today? Well, so the first question, I think, there are two things. Well, the first thing is, if we're serious with these things, we should start by using it ourselves. Yeah. So the Commission is a, it's a huge provider of funds, uh, so we, we should use it ourselves. Yeah. So this is what we plan to do for the FC, which is the better known as the Juncker Fund. Yeah. Uh, it's already providing finance, to, uh, around 30% of the investment is sustainable today. Okay. We want to do better and more uh, later. Um, for your, and the second aspect of this first question is also, uh, we're, we're in touch with colleagues from China, Japan. There is a huge interest in Asia, yeah. uh, huge, uh, both by private parties and uh, governments. And uh, so we're working uh, really closely with them. And my view is, if we're successful, we should have a world taxonomy. We should all speak the same language. Uh, so when we will have finished this work, I intend to present it in, uh, in the G20. And um, it's not proprietary. Anybody no. can use it. You know, anybody can better it. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think uh, I see it as a common good. Um, the second, uh, the second question, what I took from it is, I think we have a need for a far better uh, conversation, a quality of conversation between scientists and financial uh, uh, people. Oh, I think sounds like we're, we're hitting another glacier. Far right, These two glaciers used to join together and form the Oh, that was close. Right. So. Oh, it's over there. The one on the right, Kungsbanth, is very deep. It's over 100 meters uh, deep, and uh, it's retreating very rapidly. Conway Bay is uh, just hovering at the uh, edge of being a tidewater glacier. In a few years, it will retreat more, and then it will be a land glacier. Well, this is kind of makes it all real. The like sort of stuff we're doing in our day jobs. Yeah, when you hear the glacier is retreating Never very rapidly, you. You sort of understand the thing better. So see the connection, finally. Sort of makes it real.